Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today we are making three crafts um, out of wood because this is this um, video is part of the What Would You Make collaboration for June. And for that collaboration, our hosts are DIY Craftaholic, Rustic and Lace DIY, and the guest host is Glue La La. That's a cute name. Anyway, let's start with DIY number one. So I have these little miniature uh, rolling pins and I took bright yellow by Apple Barrel and mixed it with some white Waverly to make a more muted and lighter yellow. So I painted the um, rolling pin portion yellow and then I took Lilac Mist is the next one and that's what I used on the handles and then I turned around um, and used a little bit of that bright yellow just around the very edge um, closest to the the center part um, there's like a little lip there and I used that around that little lip So as you can see, um, well, y'all get the painting. <laughs> Evidently my editing skills uh, still need a little more tuning. Anyway, so I painted the handles this color. And um, like I said, I went, went in um, around the very that lip with the bright yellow. And I don't think I left in all of the painting. Nope, I didn't. All right, so next um, we're gonna use some of these uh, rub-on transfers that I purchased on Amazon. If I remember, I'll leave the link in the description box. Um, I had watched Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIY. She did a couple of projects using these and um, I think she's a uh, she's like a kindred spirit. Her and I both love purple, and um, but she, she when she was using them um, in her video, she gave a heads up and a warning that these particular rub-on transfers are really sticky. The carrier sheet is very very sticky. Um, it's they're workable and and you know you just need to be aware that um, it doesn't come off as easy as some of the other rub-on transfer sheets, um, the top sheet anyway, the carrier. That's the word I'm looking for, carrier sheet. So I took and cut out the, the word lemons and put it on there. And then um, there was a little sprig of lavender tied in a bow. I cut that out and then I also cut out the little uh, lemons and lavender that was next to it. Just some cute little, you know, accents to add to this. And I put the lemons and lavender right at the, um, right before the word lemons. Rubbed it on. And then I used um, the little sprig of lavender there. Well, see, <laughs> really sticky. I had a hard time finding where I could pull it up at. And then as I was bringing it up, I, oh, no, not on this one. It was on the other one that I had to lay it back down and rub a little bit more because um, I hadn't gotten it quite um, rubbed down enough. So I put that under the word lemons just kind of rubbed it on there and see you'll see here that I started to pull it up realize that it hadn't the decal hadn't stuck so I just laid it back down and rubbed it with my fingernail and there you have it you'll get a closer look at that on the final reveal so next um, I'm working on a 
just a little uh, mini sign that you can hang. You could, if you uh, recreate in this and you choose to, you could put a stand on the back as well and have it where you can stand it up on a tiered tray versus hanging it on a wall. Um, if you, and I don't know where I got this um, plaque from. <laughs> there was nothing on the back of it, no um, barcode or anything, so I'm not sure where it came from. It was in my stash. Most of these items were have been in my stash for a while. Um, the decals or the you know rub-on transfers um, are, are a recent purchase. And I, the last project is a recent purchase. But here I'm using this cute little Highland cow. And I had taken the, the wood plaque itself and dry brushed. And the, uh, the brown color on that, it was already that color. So I just dry brushed some white over it. And then I took this little round, painted it with Waverly white chalk paint and then um, put the decals down and here I was having a little bit of a difficult time with a with one little part of it and I don't know if you can see it but as I'm lifting up some of the little wisps of hair are still stuck to the transfer sheet and it was just giving me issues so I turned it around and went from this side so that I could hopefully get those stuck down and, and adhered in place, which I did. And then I just flipped it over to the non-sticky side and burnished it a little bit. Stuck that back on the backing so that it wasn't sticking to everything else. Then I cut out um, the cute little purple butterfly that was also on there and put it above the cow's head. <clears throat> so, and just took and burnished it on as well. So I've had um, kind of a busy weekend. See, isn't it cute? Or she, it might be a she with all the flowers. I don't know. You tell me. You think it's a he or a she? Anyway, I've had had a uh, busy weekend. Um, went out to dinner with my with almost all of my kids Friday night. And then I had my granddaughter Friday night through Saturday. And I had all these I had two video um, collaborations to actually get done as well. So I have definitely had a busy weekend. I got uh, all that on, dry brushed a little bit with the antique wax so it didn't look so clean and pristine. Um, then I took some of the matte Mod Podge to seal it all in. And just put a, you know, decent coat on there. Let it dry. Actually, to be honest, I went over and used my heat tool to dry it, or my, my heat gun. Um, seeing as the, these, a lot of these rub-on transfers, um, they're, some, well, this one at least is the, kind of the consistency of like a window clean. So the heat from the, the heat gun tried to wrinkle it and bubble it some um, so just beware if you're gonna use something to try to dry it you know quickly I would recommend more like a hair dryer on the cooler setting instead of using the heat I caught on soon enough that I didn't you know have any major damage on this at all it it was uh, turned out fine I was able to avoid the the bubbles on it because I was actually for once paying attention when I was doing it. I know that's an awful thing to say, um, considering that those are high heat and you can easily burn yourself if you're not paying attention. But such is life. Knock on wood. 
I have not so far had an issue with burning myself with it. So I took uh, this cute uh, burlap ribbon that has like some twine on it, you know, a twine design on it and made a bow. And then um, I took some greenery and a couple of little sprigs of lavender. And the that greenery pick I got at Dollar General. And you see there I had a oopsie. I was trying to help guide it under there and got my fingernail stuck in the the glue and pulled everything out. So I had to scrape the glue away. And then I just um, stuck a couple of, you know, one sprig each of that lavender just to kind of tie in because I have the, the purple butterfly above the, the cow's head and there's some little tiny purpley flowers, you know, next to the cow. So the lavender in that just kind of ties it all in. And I was toying with the idea of cutting the bow, the tails of the bow shorter and wrapping those up more like a laurel. Let me know what you think. So, um, we're on to DIY number three, which is a wind chime. And I just want to say, you know, thank you to all of my subscribers. You mean the world to me. Um, any of you that are coming over from the playlist, please um, give a like, a thumbs up, comment, share. And, um, you know, if you're one of my subscribers and you click on the playlist and go watch everybody else's videos, let them know that, um, that I sent you, that you hopped on over there from the playlist that I shared. So here um, on this little wind chime um, that I got at Dollar Tree, I thought it would just be kind of a cute little thing. And I'm um, using that same bright yellow and white paint mixture that I had used um, on the rolling pin. And I'm doing the inside part of the the lemon slice there with it. I was having a hard time with the trying to keep it in the lines of the um, where you see the the dark lines and whatnot. So I made a oopsie that I couldn't clean up. So I just went ahead and painted the whole thing inside. And then after it dried, I went in with the Sharpie because I could still see it. I just couldn't see it as as clearly. So then I just went in with the Sharpie and retraced the, the black lines there. I did better on the, the rest of it where I needed to um, in missing that. But on this one, I just kind of had issues. So, and I took and I painted the inside of the lemon slice there. I painted the inside of the lemon slice that's in the, the tea or the lemonade. Um, it's lemonade, not tea. And then I took and painted what's supposed to be the liquid, the same color as you can see here. Um, I outlined the lemon slices with the bright yellow for the rind. Um, I painted the ice cubes white and I painted the mint leaf green. And then here I'm just assembling it. And I still feel like I probably have something out of order. Maybe not. I had these all out of order. And as I started recording, I realized that some of them were out of order and had to go back and fix them. So I don't think I actually this is the first time I'm seeing this part of the footage, so I probably accidentally skipped over it when I was editing. So there's no telling what's going to be left in here because I don't feel like going back in and having to redo all my other stuff along with editing that. But um, this kit came with 
the strings that you would need. There were four shorter strings, one long string, and that's what I'm dealing with there. And I put it through the uh, center of the disc there. Tried to position the disc where kind of where I wanted it. Tied a knot so that um, it would stay put and not slide down the down the string. And then struggled with trying to get this through the strings through the um, the wind chimes. I tried a little pokey tool tool to poke it in there. All kinds of fun stuff. Um, and ended up just turning on my hot glue gun and having to wait for it to heat up. And just used it. As you'll see here. I just put a little dab of hot glue on there and twisted it around so that I could get um, the strings through the holes. These strings that they include in this unravel really easy. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so if you get one of these and you go to recreate this or to, to work with one of them um, from the Dollar Tree, save yourself the hassle and just be prepared to use a little dab of hot glue and twist it between your fingers to make like a more of a point so that it doesn't unravel on you when you're trying to put it through the hole. And here I'm just uh, playing around with trying to get um, the little chimes in there where I want them. Um, I don't think I got them 100% on the same level, which is fine, um, you know, the same length or whatever, which is fine because a lot of wind chimes, the, the chimes are not all at the same um, length. So it it's not bo it's not bothering my OCD for for it to not be absolutely perfect spot on. Um, what does bother my OCD is the fact that that disc does not seem to want to hang. It wants to slant one way or the other. So that is bothering my OCD. But I did the best I could in trying to correct that situation and was running out of time to keep fiddling with it. So I just let it be for now. So now I'm just taking and you put it through the chime, put it up through the hole, tie it. This is what the, the instruction said to do. Now, there are other alternatives if you wanted that to, to hang down a little bit, um, the chimes to hang down a little further, you could take and, and run it through there and put a knot to keep it from going through the chime and a knot to keep it from going through the disc. But um, yeah, I don't know. That may or may not work. So then I took the little bead that was in there and I meant to paint it and missed it. But as I said, I was running out of time. So I may in the end end up painting it, but not right now. I put a little dab of glue there to try to keep the knot from going through and then it ended up kind of, I pulled it too far and it ended up inside the bead. So I pulled it back a little bit and then added more hot glue so that it would stay in place. And then just um, stuck this through there at the hole in the leaf, tied a knot, and it's a little kitty wampus, but it is a wind chime. And I just took and used a little bit of hot glue to, to kind of secure things where I wanted them. Um, I cut the excess strings off of, you know, where I tied the chimes and everything. And then I um, positioned the knot by each of the holes on that disc and then just kind of added a little bit of hot glue so that those weren't shifting in there. But yeah, we're, um, I don't know. I, I just lost words, y'all. That happens sometimes. Sometimes I can talk all the way through it and sometimes I just lose words. But here is where I'm just kind of 
twisting the knots around where I can position them over the holes instead of having them shift as it's blowing in the wind and then you see the knot hanging you know between the chime and the disc this just looks a bit cleaner and I tacked the the knot um, at the bot back bottom of that and then I did the same thing here I just took and put a little dab of hot glue at the back of the knot before I slid it through uh, flush with the, the leaf and there we have it you'll get a better look at it at the final reveal um, because well <laughs> it's just not overly cooperative so anyway I am working on trying to get to a thousand subscribers I was gifted all of these craft supplies in here and I want to share the wealth so when I reach a thousand subscribers I'll be doing a giveaway um, so Please share with your friends if you know any that you know enjoy this content um, make sure to like subscribe click the notification bell to, uh, to tell it how you want to be um, notified when I upload new content and I, we just pre I appreciate you watching and please make sure that you check out everybody else on the playlist don't forget to like and subscribe to their channels as well and let them know that I sent you. Have a great day.